Good morning. Are y'all awake yet? Come on, before you sit down, before you sit down. Look around, do you find someone really good looking? Right, if you need a minute, go ahead, just take just a minute. Don't everybody look up here, there's other people, come on. Look right up, tell them this, tell them the rest of your life. All right, I think y'all can do better than that. Um, find, find the second best looking person you can, just find, no, hey, how about this, just point to yourself, just point to yourself. Uh, say the rest of my life. Uh, see, now you, you start talking about yourself, all of a sudden you sounded better. Say, say the rest of my life will be the best of my life. Hey, man, you can be seen. I'm going to get you to say that as much as I can. You know, what you continually hear, you'll eventually believe. If you hear all, this, all the time, well, you'll never make anything of yourself. Your life's going to be this or that. Or, uh, you start believing those kind of things. But if you keep hearing that the rest of your life could be the best of your life. How many believe the rest of your life could be the best of your life? How many hope the rest of your life will be the best of your life? The rest of your life will be the best of your life. I love to just get people to say, it just encourages me. Jesus came that you might have life and that you, not just have life, but that you might have and enjoy. How many want to enjoy your life? I mean, not just when you get to heaven, you want to enjoy it while you're here, right? He came that you might have and enjoy life have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. That sounds like a pretty good life to me. Hey, you guys have been having an amazing uh, few days impartation. How many have been here more than once this week? I've already been here more than once. Look at all those people. I know people have been joining online from all over the place. I've been joining online, uh, just connecting, watching what's happening, and, and it made me a little bit nervous looking at all the great speakers you had. I shouldn't have watched them. I'm like, man, they're all good. I, I wish I could preach as good as them. I wish I had a jacket as cool as Pastor Marco's. I wish I had hair as cool as Bishop Bronner's. I do not wish my jeans were as tight as Pastor Obed's, but, but anyway, my goodness. You had some good, good preaching all week long, and so I'm just honored to get to be here, get to be a part of us. I wasn't thinking just how good they all are. I'm like, I preach, and I'm like, I just kind of talk. You know, I just kind of, maybe I need to, like one time I felt like I really did that. I'm like, man, I felt like T.D. Jakes today. I was like, I I was all over my wife's like, no, you just stood there like normal. (laughs) Inside, I was T.D. Jakes. I'm telling you, I felt it, but it'd be intimidating, you know. That's why you you just got to learn to be yourself, right? You just got to learn to be you. I can't be you. You can't be me. I can't be Pastor Marco. How many are thankful for your pastors, by the way? What? What an incredible gift you have. And I just, I love, I love his vision. I love how you guys are just taking over uh, and, 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 and just touching people's lives all over in this city and now moving to other cities and all over the world. And, uh, and I, I just, I, I love that. I love, and we get to be a part of that. Isn't that amazing? We get to be a part of taking the word and the good news of Jesus to other people. And through your faithfulness that you, that are part of the first fruits and, and your giving it makes it makes all that happen makes all that happen so I'm, I'm i'm so excited to get to be here but i i can't preach as good as him so don't expect that and uh and i i, I don't have as many of those cool lines as bishop bronner but um here i am and we're gonna have some my jokes are better than all of them though i bet you i've watched watch this but uh anyway you gotta you just gotta unla- unwrap your gift I, I reminds me of these two snakes were slithering down the road and one snake looked at the other snake and said, hey, are we poisonous? The snake said, that's a weird question. Why, why would you ask me that? He said, because I just bit my lip. <laughs> you just got to know who you are. That's all I'm saying, right? And unwrap your, your gift. How many like gifts, by the way? Yeah, life, life is a gift. I mean, the fact that you woke up this morning, you could breathe, a gift. And gifts are meant to be enjoyed. Who are the people that just tear the paper off of gifts? You can't, you just rip it off. You just want to get in there. Who are the people that are real careful? You unwrap the gifts real slow because you could reuse that paper, right? If you're good. I'm, I'm just one of those. I just rip it open. I can't wait to get it. I love giving gifts. Tell me like giving gifts. Yeah, we all love to give. God just kind of made us that way, right? For God so loved the world that he 
He gave. He is a giver. Giving is just kind of part of who we are. I love giving gifts. A couple of Christmases ago, I got my mother-in-law a gift for Christmas. I got her a cemetery plot. And um, <laughs> my mother-in-law. <laughs> anyway, I didn't get her anything last year. She was mad at me too. You didn't give me anything for Christmas this year. I'm like, you didn't even use what I got you. The Just say, you know, you get someone a gift, you want them to use it. I had my anniversary not long ago. My wife, she's like, honey, honey, you know, today's our anniversary. I said, I know. She said, I had a dream last night that you were going to give me a diamond necklace for our anniversary. She said, what do you think that means? I said, when we go to dinner tonight and I give you your gift, you're going to find out what that means. She was so excited. Man. We went to dinner. We had a great time. I gave her a gift. She ripped the paper off that thing. And I, I bought her this book on the meaning of dreams. And uh, I hope that helped her. I had, I had absolutely no clue what it meant myself, but I hope that, I hope that helped her. But anyway, so... so you just got to be, you got to be you, all right? I, you know, as Pastor was sharing uh, a few minutes ago about, about all that we're, that we're doing, the new campuses and the food distribution and, and the homes for men and women and all that, I'm thinking, what an incredible vision. You, we are a part of a church that has an incredible vision. And what the Bible says is where there is no vision, people perish, Well, thank God for the vision of this house because how many know a lot of people are not perishing because of it? People are giving their heart to Jesus every week. People are being fed. Marriages are being restored. People are being healed. Some of you are here and serving God today because of this church, because of a vision you did not perish. But also you can flip that around to say where there are no people, the vision will perish. And that's where people like you and me, uh, we get to be a part of the vision. As Pastor shares that, the Bible says the world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. Now, most of us like to give, right? That's just the way God made us. For God so loved the world that he gave. He created us to be like him. So we're created in his image. So giving is kind of part of who we are. We're just created to be like him. And he loved the world so much that he gave what? What did he give? His son, right, but, but he didn't just give any son. Which son did he give? Think about that, his only son. It wasn't like God had three sons, right? He's like, hey, you know what? Give the second one. That one, the middle one, he is non No, God, God had one son. What, what, what is that saying? Really what it says to me is that God gave his very best. His only son, he gave his best. I think of that every time I have an opportunity to give. Is this my best? Is this my best? Now, I remember when $100 was my best. And I also remember when $1,000 was my best. So as we give, it won't all be that we all give the same amount. But if we all do our best, the vision of the house comes to pass, right? And and more lives are changed and more marriages are healed and all that good stuff happens when we give our our best. I'll never forget the first time I had an opportunity in in in, in church to really pastor shared vision like pastor did today and, 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 and God stretched me. God stretched me a little bit. A lot of times it's, it's easy to give. You know what, well, I, I can do that. 365, yeah, I'm just gonna give that. That's easy. And when God's really stretchy, like a couple people mentioned, double, double that or, more, or, even, or even more than, than that, and you feel it. Like, I, I feel like God, when he gave his only son, that was kind of a, probably a sacrifice, right? It was his only son. He didn't just have a bunch of sons and go, well, if we lose one, no big deal. He felt that, leave him, you know? And I think when we give, when we give, the, you know, a lot of times the more blessed we are, the less sacrifices we make, right? I, when, 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 you're, when you're just barely getting by, I remember my wife and I lived in a little government assisted apartment, little section eight housing. We were just kind of getting started. And, and, uh, and, and I remember I had my, I called my ministry, Dave Martin International. And people were like, International, y'all never been nowhere. We didn't have a bed. We had an air mattress. Didn't have a dining room table and chairs. We had a vision, though. International. Phone would ring. I'd answer the phone. Dave Martin International? 
Can I speak with Dave? Uh, one moment, please. <clears throat> Hello, this is Dave. <laughs> like, your staff is amazing. Yeah, I trained them myself. <laughs> we were just kind of getting started. And I, and I remember the first time I gave, gave $100. That was a lot of money back then. I remember, I remember it, I felt that. But I, I'll never forget the time Pastor shared vision and we're sitting there and, uh, and, and all of a sudden I felt like God said, give $500 in this offering. And I thought, woo, $500, huh. Pastor said there were several people who were gonna give $500, but all of a sudden the guy next to me said, I'm one of them, I'm giving 500. I said, woo, I guess I overheard God talking to that guy. So I just put my wallet back in my pocket. <laughs> and my wife leaned over a few minutes and she goes, is God telling you anything? I said, I don't know, is he telling you anything? <laughs> she said, I think we're supposed to give 500. I said, oh, shoot. <laughs> now at, at that time we, we made, we, I remember this day, I had $503 in my checkbook. I had 503. Now when you have $503 and God wants 500 of it, you want to make sure he knows what he's doing. You know, I remember, I remember I kind of opened the app and, and uh, kind of held it up so he could see how much was in my account. He said he already knew how much was in my account, so I didn't ask for more. <laughs> so I filled out the envelope and, and um, ink is smearing from the tears. <laughs> God loves a cheerful giver. <laughs> I just looked like Joel Osteen right there, didn't I? God loves the cheerful giver. <laughs> Amen. Um, the other day, someone introduced me and said, what's Dave Martin like? Someone said, he's kind of a mixture between Joel Osteen and Larry the Cable Guy. <laughs> so, what, is it, what in the world? <laughs> just, just hold your Bible up with me and say, get her done. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, I, I'm writing, the, I'm writing the, the check, ink is smeared, you know. <laughs> you shouldn't cry when you give to God. I said, I'm not, I'm just watering my seed. <laughs> watering my seed. I will tell you this, I will tell you this. If you're happy every time you give, you probably don't give a lot. There's a lot of times I hadn't been happy. Willing, yes. Obedient, fine. Happy? Uh-uh. When you have $503 and he wants 500, not happy about that. Obedient? Yeah. I remember, I remember we gave the, the, the $500. Now, now, I remember the next year, God stretched me to do a little bit more. It's like, it's like working out, right? I mean, if you go in the gym, you're like, I want to bench press 500 pounds. First day, they're going to be like, you probably shouldn't start with 500. How about we start with 100? And I start bench pressing 100 pounds. Well, pretty soon I've got the 100. It's, it's, it's easy. So what are they going to do? They're going to add some weight on the end, right? And I'm going to work my way up, One, 150. I'm working my way up, 150. And then they add some weight on, 170. I'm work, I just keep, I keep working. My, same with, with giving, right? One day, I can say, one day I'm going to give $100,000. Well, I got to start with where I'm at, maybe 500. I got 500. Now, next year, I'm going to stretch. I want to do a little bit more than I did before because I'm, I'm just working my way up, right? One day, I'm going to bench press 500. Right now, I bench press, I don't know, around 330. Four o'clock, somewhere around that time is usually when I bench. <laughs> so y'all get that later, but um, I'm just, I'm, I'm working my way up. And so, so I, I remember the first time, I, now here, here's one thing I have learned and I would encourage you. I'd encourage you as you're preparing for your first fruits and all that, really listen for God's voice. Listen to God, I learned this a long time ago. When God speaks to you about a seed, he's got a harvest on his mind. See, God's already thinking about how he wants to bless you, but nothing leaves heaven until something leaves earth. When you let go of what's in your hand, then God lets go of what's in his hand. So I would encourage you, just, just be listening. Because when that, that $500, my wife and I lived in a little government-assisted apartment, we're $32,000 in debt. And we heard some great testimonies this morning of some supernatural things that God got involved and helped people uh, get rid of debt. And, and uh, how many like to be debt-free? Wouldn't that be awesome? Think how much more you could do for the kingdom. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you ain't got to worry about, well, I got to pay off that furniture and I got to do this, and I got to, he said, oh man, pastor, what else are we going to do? Because pastor can give us all the vision in the world, but it's up to us to decide how fast we get there, 
right? He gives the vision. We decide the acceleration of the vision through our, through our giving. And so, so I, I, I'll never forget that, $500. I'm like, oh my goodness. What's amazing is you just never know how God's gonna bless you. Just a couple weeks later, my wife was in Walmart one day and uh, getting some, some, some Walmart stuff, whatever, whatever that is. She's, anyway, um, lady comes up to her and her friend with a video camera and says, hey, um, I was wondering if, if you and your, your uh, friend would be interested in being in a Walmart commercial. We've got people at 20 Walmarts today around the country looking for two people, two friends that will be in a Walmart commercial. They said, what do we have to do? They said, we're just going to, just a little audition. We're going to videotape. You just go over here and shop for two or three minutes. We'll videotape you shopping. They all go, these all videos go to Chicago. They'll pick two people. Sure, they go and do it. They come home, tell me about it. And I'm kind of laughing at them. You you don't don't just walk into Walmart and people go, hey, you want to be in a commercial? I've, I've been to Walmart a lot. No one's ever asked me to be in a commercial. So I'm, I'm, I'm laughing about it until a couple of days later when we get a telephone call from out of all the Walmarts and all the people they videoed, her and her friend were, were chosen for this Walmart commercial. They said, can you be at Walmart Friday morning at eight o'clock? They said, sure, we'll be there. They get there Friday morning, eight o'clock, looking for the lady with the camera. Half of Walmart's blocked off. There's lights, cameras everywhere. They said, we're here for the commercial. They said, okay, come right this way. They said, who else is in the commercial? They said, nobody, it's just you two. They said, well, what, 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 do we have to learn lines? What do we get? No, they said, no, you're just, you're just gonna shop. We'll videotape you. You shop, talk about how much you love Walmart, and then we'll make a commercial out of it. So they did that. Walmart's great. I love Walmart. This look good on me. That's what they did. Eight hours, they filmed them walking around Walmart shopping. At the end of the day, they thanked them for coming and handed them each a check for $800. Now, I don't know about you, but I call that a fa- I call that favor. I call that a harvest. I mean, uh, it's, it, believe me, it's the first time she's ever gone shopping and came home with more money than she's left with. I guarantee you that. I considered it a blessing. But you know, just a few weeks earlier, just a few weeks earlier, God spoke to us about a seed. Remember, he spoke to us about the $500. You think God didn't already know about the commercial when he told me to give the 500? Well, I've already got back more than the 500. I got 800. But they said, oh, by the way, this is gonna be a national commercial. If you can sign these papers, every time it airs, you'll get paid for it. So they signed the papers and, and they came home and told me about it. And, and, and I'm like, how much do you get paid? And, and I don't know. She's like, I don't know. We got to call this number on Monday because if it's on cable, you get a certain amount. If it's on a network, you get a different amount. And she's explained this whole thing to me. And, I, and I, I'm like, I don't know. And, and at church on Sunday, the Holy Spirit says to me, he says, how much would you like that commercial to make? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know if, the, if they commercials make 500 or 5,000. But, you know, if you're going to be thinking anyway... Might as well think big, right? I mean, we serve a big God. Ephesians 3.20 said he'll do above and beyond anything you could even imagine. I can imagine some pretty big things. So anyway, the the commercial started airing. It was going to air for 13 weeks. By the end of the first two weeks, we'd already received checks in the mail for over $5,000. The commercial kept airing. By the end of the 13 weeks, we'd received checks in the mail for over $15,000. You never know how God's going to bless you. Remember a few weeks ago, he spoke to me about $500, but he already knew about the commercial. You just, next time you go to Walmart, (laughs) better fix your hair, do your make, put put your lashes on or something. You just... You never, I know every time I'm at Walmart now, when I walk by the security cameras, I'm, <laughs> hey, you just, you just never know how God's going to bless you. You probably heard about the, the little old lady who lived right next door to an atheist. And this atheist would hear her pray every day. He said, I'm so tired of hearing this lady pray. There is no God. I got to hear her pray to God. There is no God. One day he heard her praying for groceries. She didn't have any food. She's praying for for groceries. And he thought, here's my chance. I'm going to show her. I'm going to prove to this lady. I'm going to show her there is no God. So he went to the grocery store and he bought two bags of groceries. Came over and he put them on her steps, rang the doorbell. He hid around the corner. She came out and saw the groceries. She said, thank you, Lord, for the groceries. Thanks for answering my prayer. The atheist jumped out and said, ha, I got you. Said, God didn't bring you those groceries. I bought those groceries. I went to the store. I bought them. I brought them over here. I put them on your steps. God had nothing to do with this. 
That old lady looked down at her groceries. She looked over that atheist. She said, thank you, Lord, for the groceries and thanks for making the devil pay for it. You just, you just never know, right? You just never know how God's gonna bless you. I just encourage you every time, every time he speaks to you. I remember I, I worked up to 1,000. I remember, I remember the first time I gave 2,500. I've been saving that. Anybody ever save money for something? Anybody ever say, I've been saving. I've been saving up and I'd saved up uh, 2,500. We needed a second car. And I remember we were in church one Sunday. Just, I was just enjoying the praise and worship. It's so good. Like you guys, oh man, you guys got amazing praise and worship. I'm mean, thankful for your, the band and worship team that just lead us into God's presence. Oh, but I'm just enjoying it, right? And all of a sudden the Holy Spirit says, you know the money you've been saving for your car? Yeah, yeah. He's like, I want you to put it in the building fund here at church. I'm like, huh, I'm gonna turn that music up. Try to, try to drown that out. You know, all of a sudden my wife leaned over and says, God telling you anything? Shoot. It's my car money, I've been saving that. But when God speaks to you about a seed, he's already got a harvest on his mind. So I've learned this now, so I'm writing the check out, 2,500, ink is smearing again from the tears. I watered that seed. A couple days later, I'm in the car with the guy, and we're talking. He's like, hey, I'm thinking about getting a new car. I said, hey, yeah, so was I. <laughs> he said, you should buy my car. I'm going to sell this car. You should buy it. I said, actually, I, I, actually, I love this car. It was actually, the, we needed a second car, and it was the kind of car we were looking for. And I said, yeah, okay, okay. He said, look, I'm not in any hurry. He said, well, get, just when you get home, tell your wife, you guys pray about it, and just let me know. I said, okay, fine, fine. So I got home and told Christine, but I said, hey, I said, there's cars. She goes, oh, I love that car. Let's pray about it. I'm like, yeah, pray if you want to, fine, fine. <laughs> I was still a little upset, honestly, about giving all my money in the offering, right? And so she's praying, Lord, if this is the car, I'm like, well, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit says, that's your car. Call them and tell them you want it. I said, I would, but you got all my money. He said, just call him. So I called the guy. I said, look, I said, you, you said you weren't in a hurry. Can you give me a, a, a few days, maybe a month to get some things together? My wife and I are praying and we'd like to buy that car from you. He said, you know what, actually? He said, my wife and I were praying last night and, and we just felt, God said, if you called and wanted the car, that we were just supposed to give it to you. He said, I don't know if you have plans tonight, but we'd like to bring the keys and the title over to your house. And I said, actually, our plans just changed. <laughs> How about that? We're going to be home. You just never know how God's going to bless you. And I've just kept, I've just all along the time from that little government assisted apartment as we begin to, to build God's house. See, Ephesians says what you make happen for God's house, God will make happen for your house. And as we have put forth building God's house all along the way over the last 20 something years, we've seen God build our house. We've moved from that little apartment to a regular apartment to our, our first house, which was just supernatural how that happened. Then God spoke to us about 5,000, 10,000. First time we gave 25, I never even dreamed I'd have 25,000. I mean, I grew up a, a poor kid from Mississippi. We thought you're supposed to be poor because poor people go to heaven. That's what they told us. We did everything we could to stay broke. We were, you know, we, we'd go to KFC, lick other people's fingers. You know what I'm saying? Just, it was not, it was not good. My dad used to tell us if the ice cream truck was playing music, that meant they were out. That's just, that's just kind of how I grew up. I didn't, I didn't know that, that God could bless you like he, he began to bless us as we were obedient and faithful in our giving. The world of the generous gets larger and larger. Proverbs, the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. We're talking about that bumper harvest. How many want that large, unusual, uncommon harvest that, that comes? It comes to the world of the, of the generous. I, I forget, our church was building a youth center and they wanted to build it cash. And pastors shared the vision. We're sitting there in the service and, and my wife leans over and says, I think God wants us to give 25,000 to the youth center. 
And I said, oh, I don't feel that. I didn't feel that at all. And, uh, and, and, uh, and so uh, a few minutes later, the Holy Spirit says, will you give 25,000 to the youth center? I said, I don't have 25,000. He said, I didn't ask you if you had 25,000. He said, I asked you if you would give it. I said, well, yeah, if I had it, yes, I would give it. He said, okay. He said, I, I, you remember that scripture says, I will supply seed to the sower. A lot of times you don't have anything to give. It's just because he didn't know you'd give it. But when he knows you desire to give it, he starts looking to get you seed to sow. He, pro he provides seed for sowers. So when you say, God, I want to be a sower, my, my prayer every day, Lord, make me a distribution center. Bless me so that I can bless others. Say this with me. Say, I'm blessed to be a blessing. If you remember that one thing, I'm blessed to be a blessing. It's not about the cars, it's not about the houses, it's not about all that stuff. We're blessed to be a blessing. I, I told the last service I was talking about, in this building are, are water pipes. All throughout this building are water pipes. What do water pipes do? They distribute water from one part of the building to another part of the building. That's what they do, they distribute water. The purpose of a water pipe is not to get wet. Right? That's not why water pipes were created. They're, they're created to distribute water. Now, in the process of distributing water, how many know the water pipes get wet? Right? Not the purpose of the pipe, just part of the process. And it, it's, the, it's the same thing with God's blessing. The purpose of God's blessings on your life are not just so you can get blessed, but they're so that you can be a blessing. Lord, make me a distribution center of your blessing. Bless me so that I can be, bless others. Now, in the process of blessing others, you will get blessed. It's just part of the process. It's not the purpose. It's like the water pipe. How many know when the water pipe distributes water, the water pipe gets wet? It's not the purpose of the pipe. It's just part of the process. And then the same thing is I'm a blessing. God blesses me. So now I can be blessed to be a blessing. It's like the uh, uh, frijoles. Is that right? Did I say that right? Gracias. <laughs> Didn't know I could speak Spanish like that. That's it. I do know a few. Things. I, I, I almost, I was almost, uh, I was engaged to a Mexican girl, a girl from Mexico. Was, didn't work out. I ended up with marrying an Italian, but they're my two favorite foods. So I was fine either way. But anyway, <laughs> um, uh, I remember Saturday nights watching Sabado Gigante with her grandma. <laughs> Oh, that was the longest show in the world. So. Anyway, um, what, was I, what was I talking about? Oh, the, the frijoles. Yeah, here's the thing. You can keep your seed, but when you sow your seed, on the other side of a seed is a harvest. And inside of every harvest is more seed. See? Uh, and so you can keep it, hold on to your seed, and that's all it'll ever be. But when you sow it, it comes back. As, how many believe the Bible? Let me, let me just start that. Okay, a little over half of you. It's a good start. Because you got to believe the Bible. If you're going to believe what I'm going to tell you right here, you got to believe the Bible. If you don't believe the Bible, you won't get it. So most of you believe the Bible. And, and I mean, plus, I mean, my goodness, how many believe it's God's word? Look at that confetti coming. What's going on? <laughs> and the party started. Hey. Um, ain't no party like a Holy Ghost. I mean, you think about it. If, if, if God didn't write the Bible, who did? Like people tell me, you think God really wrote all that stuff? I mean, I've, I've wondered before. I've, I've been, my dad's a preacher. My grandfather's a preacher. I, I've, I've been in church my whole life. But how many have ever wondered that though? I mean, there's a lot of stuff. Do you think God really wrote all that? How many have ever wondered? Be honest. You won't go to hell. Let me see your hand. Okay. <laughs> Well, a lot of people, I've wondered before, I mean, if God didn't write it, so I started, started thinking one day, if God didn't write it, who did write it, right? Then you got to start thinking of people you know. Got to narrow it down. Maybe Michael Tony did it. I don't know. He don't do a lot. <laughs> and I found this scripture, if you don't work, you don't eat. Oh, shoot. Uncle Tony didn't write that. I guarantee you. He's so lazy. He'd have never wrote that. <laughs> Maybe my wife wrote it. Submit to your husband. Nope, she didn't write it. Um, how many, be honest, be honest. How many, if, if you'd have wrote the Bible, how many could think of at least three things you would not have put in there? Right? Be honest. Tithing would have been like 5%. We'd all changed a couple things. 
Here's what I do know. No human being could have ever wrote a standard this high. So if God said it, I'm just crazy enough to believe it. And, and, and so, so when, I, when I begin to understand this, when I begin to see this, I believe God wants to bless us. I'm believing for the bumper uh, uh, crop. I'm believing for a big harvest. I'm believing God will bless me to be a greater blessing. But you got to believe. Here's the thing. You got to believe what the word says. And so the foundation has to be, because you can believe, get the harvest and then lose it if you don't understand. It's not God's plan for you to be broke. It's not God's plan for you to barely get by. It's not God's plan for you to be stressed out all the time. We serve a good, how many believe we serve a good God? Yeah. And, 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 and God is for you. You are a child of God. I've got a son, one son, he's 14 years old. His name is Solomon. And, uh, and, and Solomon's my, uh, he's, he's a miracle. He's, he's a miracle. We, we, we tried to have kids for a long time. Finally, my wife got pregnant with, with Solomon. And then the doctor told us he's in her, her fallopian tube. And they're gonna have to remove the baby. And, and it was just, I mean, well, we believed God. We actually sowed seed and believed God to, 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 to bring a harvest. And, uh, and we, they scheduled the surgery. We went in that morning, just still believing God, still trusting God. And when they, they did the ultrasound right before to go in to remove the baby and everything, they said, wait, someone's made a huge mistake. Your baby's actually in your womb exactly where it's supposed to be. And uh, I, you know, they call it a mistake. I just called it a miracle. How many know God's still doing those, still doing miracles? And, and, and my wife went on to carry him the rest of the, you know, nine months and he came out perfect, you know. He's not perfect, you know. <laughs> He's not perfect. He, he didn't even come out perfect, actually. He was born C-section. But anyway, you can't tell when you look at him. He just, <laughs> he looks fine. He looks totally normal. <laughs> the only way you can even tell he was born C-section is whenever he leaves the house, he usually goes through a window. <laughs> but... Other than that, he's normally totally normal. Anyway, all right, let me, let me, I, I got, I got, I got seven minutes. Gosh, y'all are making me happy. This is totally different than what I did the first service. I don't know. Y'all have to go back and watch that to get more of this teaching. I'm going to give it to you real quick. Are y'all ready? All right, if you'll listen fast, I'm going to talk fast. Say, I'm blessed, I'm blessed to be a blessing. Now, I usually teach a lot uh, of principle, but I'm going to give you a little foundation. And, and there's principles. You've got to have the principles. There's a, uh, the, the principles help you to, to stay operating in the blessing that God's already provided for you. Galatians chapter 3. Let me show you this. Uh, because I just don't believe that God wants us just barely getting by. It says, it, it says in the scripture, Christ has redeemed us. Say this with, say this with Christ has redeemed me. Say that. Okay, if you're, if you're at home watching online, say that. Say, Christ has redeemed me. Okay, uh, I, I looked up the word redeemed, and it says to compensate for the faults or bad aspects of something. To compensate for the, the bad aspects of something. So if, if you're going to read this verse, Christ uh, uh, redeemed us from the self-defeating, cursed life. So Christ has redeemed us from the curse. Now, if you know what the curse is, it, it is, it is sickness, poverty, and spiritual death. Sickness, poverty, and, and, and spiritual death. What does that mean? Christ has redeemed us because uh, uh, the, the price that he paid the, to compensate for these bad aspects, we can receive healing. How many believe God still heals people? You see, and okay, good, good. All right, we're, this is gonna help us go fast. And, and then from spiritual death, how many believe Jesus is still saving people today? People are still, yeah. And, and, then, and then from poverty, which means God wants us blessed. So to be redeemed from poverty, I believe he wants to redeem us to prosperity. Now you say, well, I don't know about that prosperity thing. Here we go. It's one of those kind of messages. How, how many want your marriage to be better than it is right now if you're married? How many want your body to be healthier than it is right now? How many like to have more joy in your, in your how many like to have more love in your home? How many, how many like to have more money in your checkbook? Okay, look at all you people wanting to be prosperous. So obviously most of you believe in that because uh, all prosperous means is to do well. It's not a money thing. It's, it's to prosper. God wishes above all things you'd prosper. It means he wishes above all things that you would do well that your kids would be well behaved, that your, that your families would be strong, that your business would do well. That, that, he said, that's what I wish. I wish you'd do well. So 
Christ redeemed us from the curse. Now, I'm going to focus on one aspect today because of what we're talking about this weekend. And I want you to get this impartation. I'm going to get it to you. You got to receive it. But uh, I want to talk about the aspect of, of poverty. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures. And these scriptures right here are going to help us because the entrance of God's word, the Bible says, brings light. So I'm going to give you some word. We're going to shine some light on this real fast. And, uh, and, and hopefully you'll get the impartation and you'll be able to walk in the blessings of what God has for us. Now, if we go all the way back to Adam, the very first human being God created, God created Adam to be prosperous. I mean, he put him in this, this beautiful garden. He had dominion over all of God's creation. So from the very beginning, God created man to be prosperous, to have dominion, to, to, to do to do well. Now, if you, if you look at it, the devil came along and kind of got involved and messed a bunch of that stuff up. And that was the, the problem, again, destroying all that. And, uh, and, and then Jesus now has come back to redeem us from the curse and restore back to us that position of dominion and authority and prosperity that God meant for us from the very beginning. When he came to redeem us from the curse, is that he became a, a curse for us. Christ redeemed us from the self-defeating curse life by absorbing it completely into himself. Do you remember uh, the scripture says, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. That's what happened when Jesus died on the cross for you and was nailed to the tree. He became a curse, it says, and at the same time dissolved the curse. So he became a curse um, Curses everyone who hangs on a tree. When he died on the cross for you, he took care of the curse that had come on us, sickness, poverty, and spiritual death. Now, so Jesus shed his, his blood, right? He hung on a tree so the curse could be broken off of you and, and my life, so we could receive healing, so we could uh, receive salvation and eternal life, and so that we could receive the blessing of doing well and prospering in life. That is the power of the blood that Jesus shed for you and for me. So let me ask you, do you want to receive the full benefit of what Jesus has done for you? How many want to receive the full benefit of it? I don't want just part of it, 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 it which he has already done for you. Has means past tense, right? He already did it. One simple, easy example to see what Jesus did for us. Um, I heard about a gentleman in England. This is years ago, wanted to come to America. The, the American dream, a new life, new idea, new, and, and, and so he didn't have enough money to buy a plane ticket or anything like that, but he'd found out about a boat that he could get on and, and there was a, a, a ship coming from uh, England to America. And so he saved up his money and he bought a ticket on the boat. Well, when he bought a ticket, he didn't have enough money for food or all the extra things. He just barely had enough to get the ticket. So he bought the ticket and he packed in his bag some bread and some, some a little jar of water. And he thought, I'll just ration that out over the several days it'll take to get to America. A little bit of bread, a little bit of water, at least I'll live, I'll be fine. First day came the cruise, they take off and that night's time for dinner. Anybody ever been on a cruise? Let me see if you ever been on a cruise. Okay, quite a few people. Anybody ever watch a love boat? Uh, we'll count that for this. If you've ever been on a cruise, when it's time to eat, there's all kind of food, right? Just tables and tables. So it was time for dinner and the young man went upstairs, but of course he didn't have money for the food. He just barely had enough money to get the ticket. So he's looking in the window and he's seeing all these people eat, but he just went back down to his cabin, had a little bit of bread, a little bit of water. Next day, same thing, breakfast, not same thing. After two or three days, the captain noticed. He said, young man, I noticed that every time it's time to eat, you come in, you peek in, you see all the food, but you never go in and have any of the food. You just keep going back downstairs. Can I ask you why you don't have any, why you don't go eat any of the food? And the young man said, Captain, he said, when I bought my ticket, he said, I barely had enough to get the ticket. I just want to go to America. I want to begin a new life. I didn't have enough money for the, the food. I just packed a little bag of bread and some, some water. And, and, and the captain looked at the young man. He said, young man, he said, didn't you realize when you purchased your ticket that all the food was included? See, Jesus, when he died on the cross for you, he purchased the ticket. And everything that you need has already been included in the ticket. It's already been provided 
in the ticket and you're sitting there having a little bit of bread, a little bit of ration. Well, we'll just one day, we'll just get to go to heaven and it'll all be over. When that's not his plan for you, it's already been included that you could be healthy, that you could be prosperous, that you could live a life, an abundant life. Christ has redeemed us from the curse. He has redeemed us. That's you and that's me. That's every person who's accepted Jesus has been redeemed through his blood and his death on the cross. He already paid the price so that we could get back to the first place where Adam was and have dominion, have victory, have power, have authority, and have prosperity. That was God's plan for us from the beginning. And so uh, he set Adam up in that place. Like I said, the devil came in and, and messed it all up, but now he came to redeem us from this curse is sickness and poverty and, 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 and spiritual, spiritual death. So we all want to, to do well. All throughout the Bible, it talks to us about that, right? Ephesians 3.20, you be exceeding, do exceedingly abundantly above all you could think or ask. In Luke, he says that you'll have good measure, pressed down, shaken together. That's what happens when you give. See, when you honor God with your tithe and offering, and then you give over and above that, uh, like our, 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 our first fruits, Give, and it will be given. How many believe the Bible again? Okay, good. A few more of you. <laughs> give, and it will be given back to you. Let me ask you this. Uh, how many have ever, how many have ever, be honest, you've been a little lazy. You needed to take the garbage out, but you didn't feel like taking the garbage out. So you just pressed it down in the can. You just pressed it down. Let me see your hand. It, it's okay for this. Okay. Most of us have done that. Yeah. You just press it down. Why? Because if, if you press it down, you got more room, right? You don't have to go outside yet. You can just keep putting stuff in there. And, and pretty soon you keep putting stuff in there. You can't press it down anymore. So what do you have, uh, what, what happens? It, 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 you gotta, if you take the bag out of the can, you ever notice if you take the bag out of the can and shake it, you find a little bit more room, right? You still don't have to take it out. You can sit it down next to the can and keep putting some stuff in there until finally it gets to the place where it's overflowing and you got to take it out. This scripture is saying the exact, God said, that's how I want to bless you. When you give, I'm going to give it back to you. Good measure, press down, a little more blessing, shaking together, a little more blessing, running over, that's how I want to bless you. When you give, I give it back to you. And so we, we, we serve this, this God who, who we, we serve a good God. I believe we serve a good God who wants us to be happier and healthier. And, and like I said, I've got my, my son. Now, as a father, if, if my son goes out looking all raggedy and everything, and he goes around saying, yep, I'm Dr. Dave's son. I'd be like, son, don't tell him. Don't tell him that. You look horrible today. Just... How do you think God feels? We're his children. And you're out there barely making it, always depressed and always down. Yeah, I'm just trying to make devils fight me all day today. Yeah, we should be the most positive. Yes, we're going to have trials, tribulation. But you know, in John 16, 33, he said, even in the middle of all your trials and tribulation, be of good cheer. Now listen, I gotta work at this. How many, how many have to work at being positive? Be honest, yeah, I, I have to work at it. It's not natural for me, I was born a, I was born a pessimist. I mean, even my blood type is B negative, right? So I gotta work to be positive. But when you know you serve a good God, and that God is for you and not against you. And then you, you understand all these principles that he's, that he, he's put in here to help us to, uh, if you're not walking, if you're not talking about, uh, uh, this isn't just about prosperous, about stuff. Don't get, it, don't get that word all mixed up with all this other stuff. It just means it, just doing well and, and he wants to bless you so you can be a blessing and, and prosperity on this earth. Um, you can't take anything with you anyway. That, and God doesn't mind you having a nice car. That's not what I'm saying. But that, I'm just saying that's not the purpose. He wants to prosper you so you can be a blessing. Say, I'm blessed, blessed. to be a blessing. 
And so I shared with you my story in that little government assisted apartment, little section eight housing, didn't have a bed, had an air mattress, didn't have a dining room table and chairs. But I found out that there was a big difference. I was saved. I was saved. I was going to heaven. I'd received that part. I'd been redeemed from the curse of, of spiritual death. I'd already given my heart to Jesus, but I was still broke. I was still trying to figure out how to get by every week, stressed out. You know, the number one cause of divorce is what? Money, finances. Uh, number one cause of stress, financial. How many have ever had some financial stress? Don't you hate that? And then stress causes all kinds of disease. So you know that can't be God's plan for you. And so in that little apartment, we begin to understand some principles. And there's a big difference between the person of Jesus and the principles of Jesus. The person of Jesus prepares you for heaven. The principles of Jesus prepare you for earth. There are ungodly people who will use godly principles to achieve ungodly results. While the church, we don't know the principles, wonder why we're struggling. Like tithing, tithing is a principle that opens up the windows of heaven over your life. How many want the windows of heaven open over your life? Yeah, um, writing down your goals is a principle that, that uh, puts you in a place of reaching your dreams. I've been on a, a tour, I, about 50% of what I do is in the corporate arena. So we speak for a lot of corporations, a lot of sports teams, and, and uh, I'm on a, a tour called Get Motivated with uh, the guys from Shark Tank, uh, if you ever seen that show, Shark Tank, Tony Robbins, some of those guys. And I was talking to one of the guys, Damon John, he's uh, on the show Shark Tank. He was talking to me about this company he started called FUBU. And, and when he started, he wrote down all of his dreams and goals. And I said, I said, oh yeah. I said, remember I told you all this stuff we teach is in the Bible. I said, that's in the Bible too. He said, that's not in the Bible, writing down your goals. I said, yeah, it's in the Bible. All this stuff's in the, in the, the Bible's the greatest success book ever. Yeah, it's all in here for us, writing down your goals. The Bible says in the back, write the vision, make it plain so you can run with it, right? So you got to write the vision down so you know where to go. That's writing down your goals. You get there a lot quicker when you write it down. You'll dramatically increase the likelihood of accomplishment by writing it down. It's in the Bible. And so I, I begin to see these principles that were all in the Bible and I begin to study great achievers and I found all the things they were doing were biblical principles that the church, we were, we were just shouting, having a good time, but we didn't know all these principles. You know, a lot of times I grew up in a spirit filled Pentecostal church. We'd run, shout. I mean, we thought that scripture said, be transformed by the removal of your mind. And we'd fall down broke, get up broke. We just, but... I actually, the scripture said the renewal of your mind. That, that, that's a change in the way that you think. And if you could change the way you think. So as I began to study these achievers, I, 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 wrote, uh, I wrote a book. I, I got a, uh, there's a few of them left. The first service was really into wisdom. I'm not sure about you guys. But uh, so they, they bought most of them up. There's, there's a few left back there. Because um, I, I believe one of the greatest investments you'll make is in yourself. The Bible said wisdom is more valuable than silver, more profitable than gold, more precious than rubies. And this book is less than all that stuff. How many like to be doing better than you're doing right now? Let me see. Okay, most of us. If you're not doing as well as you'd like to be doing, it just means there's something you don't know. Okay? If you're not doing as well in any area of your life, if you're not doing as well as you'd like to be doing, it means there's something you don't know. When I heard that, I went from being a know-it-all to being a learn-it-all. And I began to study these principles. I found 12. I put them in this book called The 12 Traits of the Greats. 12 Traits of the Greats. There's a few of them left. Not for everybody. One guy bought some. I'm buying for, for people he worked, uh, worked for them and, and people buying them for other people. But anyway, I love this because every time you buy a copy, we give a copy. We've given thousands of books away to inmates. We love to give them to inmates who, who really need another chance, just need to know some principles. And so when you buy a book, we... We give a book to a, an inmate. We've given thousands of them to prisons and, 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 and things like that. But anyway, there's a few of them left back there. If you're into wisdom, like I said, not everybody's, not everybody's into it. How much is the book? $20. Woo. You want to go out to eat? <laughs> Won't spend $20 on our brain, but we'll spend 40 on our stomach. <laughs> Wonder why people notice one more than the other. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have said that. Anyway, um, the Bible said a wise person will increase in learning. So the Bible, if you're smart, the Bible says you'll get smarter. And you go to my house, I got over 4,000 books. Why? Too much stuff I don't know. 
it's too much stuff I don't know. So I go through these traits, things like responsibility. I put that one first because most people, if you can't get past that, if you can't take responsibility, you're never, none of this other stuff's gonna matter anyway. As long as you blame everybody else, someone else's fault. My doctor said, Dave, you need to lose 25 pounds. I'm like, that's, that's Krispy Kreme's fault. <laughs> Not my fault. No, but my decision yesterday to eat the donut got me to the place I am today, 25 pounds overweight. So it's not Krispy Kreme's fault. It's that red light though is distracting, isn't it? Y'all got Krispy Kreme here, that red light flashes when they're hot. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Y'all don't know what I'm talking about? There's a red light, means they're hot. It means they're fresh. And the devil, that's the flames of hell. That red light is the flames of hell. It'll pull you right in. I've been doing good. I've been clean now about six weeks. <laughs> I did have a little relapse a couple of days ago. I don't even know what happened. I, that light was flashing. I blacked out. <laughs> I woke up with glaze all over me. <laughs> I don't know what happened. It's just something that light flashes. I'm like, no, don't do it. And I'm like, my mind's telling me no. <laughs> but my body. Telling me, yeah. Anyway, um, all right, I got to pray for you and we got to finish this. We got to finish this. So anyway, I'll be back there to sign books. If you're interested, uh, like I said, I'd encourage you, make an investment in yourself. $20 and invest in someone else. And I promise you, uh, the principles and the things you'll learn in there will help you to stay at that place. As you sow, you do those biblical principles. You sow, you, you reap, and then God gives us uh, principles that help us to maintain the blessing that he has for us because he has redeemed us. Say, I'm redeemed. He's redeemed us from the curse of, of poverty. Let me just um, uh, honor God with that principle of tithing too. That's a really, that's a really big, that's just bringing the first part back to God, you know, because uh, God wants to bless you. He says he redeems you from the curse. Let me finish this scripture right here. Look at this. Um, he, he, at the same time, he dissolved the curse. And now because of that, the air is cleared and we can see that Abraham's blessing is present and available to the, non, the non-Jews too. That's us, that's us. So Abraham's blessing is available to you. What is Abraham's blessing? God said to Abraham, he said, I will bless you and you will be a blessing and those who bless you will be blessed. I will bless you. So if you receive this blessing, then you ought to be blessed. Then the people, you ought to be a blessing and people who bless you will be blessed. You are Abraham's seed, the Bible says, a couple of verses later down there, and heirs according to that promise. How many are ready to receive that blessing on your life? Abraham's blessing on your life. You've been redeemed. All you gotta do is believe it and receive it. Say, I believe it. I receive it. All right, say amen. amen. All right, let me pray for you real quick. Hopefully I get to, to meet you out there. I, I, I went way over my time today. But I, I don't want to close without saying a prayer over you. How many, how many got at least one thing that helped you today? One thing to change your thinking one day? So I encourage you, uh, if you didn't get a chance earlier, and God's speaking to you, maybe just stretch a little bit. Make sure you find one of those out in the, in the lobby. There's all kind of containers, the containers out there. Get that seed in the ground. Maybe you didn't do anything. God's speaking to you. Uh, listen to his voice. Get that seed in the ground. God loved you so much that he, he gave. And so we give because he gave to us. But you know what he gave? He gave his only son, Jesus. Maybe you've never received that gift. It was a gift just for you, whether you're, with us online today or whether you're in the building. I'll tell you what, I've learned this. Life goes better when you put God first. Life, how many found that to be true? Look, you can look around, you see all those people, testimonies right there. Life goes better. Didn't say life goes perfect. In the world, you'll have trials, tribulations, distress, but be of good cheer. I've already overcome the world. If you hear and you said, you know what, Dave, I've never made the decision to put God first in my life. If you're watching online or or maybe you're here and you say, you know what, Dave, at one point I did put God first place in my life, but if I'm real honest right now, I've allowed some other things to come before, before God in my life. Maybe it's a job, maybe it's a relationship, but God's not first place in your life right now. 
but you know you need to put him back. He, he, he won't condemn you, but he may convict you. You say, you know what, that's me. I'm telling you, it's the best decision you'll ever make. The decision to put God first place in your heart. And it's real easy. He said, all you gotta do is believe in your heart. Say with your mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord. That's simple. Believe in your heart, say with your mouth. And if that's you, you're one of those people. Hey, bow your heads just for a moment. Well, if you're here, if you're online, I'm gonna count to three. I'm gonna look across the building one time. Just one time, make this real easy. You already know if this is you. You already know if God's not first place in your life or if you need to put him back first place in your life. We just love to pray with you, help you. I'm telling you what, if, if that's you, 12 months from now, you're not even gonna believe what God will do in your life. I'd encourage you, if, if, if you're saying yes, we'd love to help you along that journey, coach you along that journey to be everything that God created you to be online here in the building. Heads bowed, I'm gonna count to three. If that's you, you say, Dave, I'm putting God first place in my life today. I wanna live in the full abundant life he's promised me. I'm telling you, when you put God first, he'll take you places you've never dreamed. Or you need to put God back first place in your life, whether you're online or whether you're in the room. One, I'm gonna count to three, just lift your hand real quick. Two and three. Let me see your hand across the building in the room. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. God bless you. Online, you might wanna pop up that little emoji, that little hand. It's the best decision you could ever make. And we wanna help you on that journey. Matter of fact, all across the room, I want you to stand up. And if you lifted your hand, I want you to come down here real quick. Just come down here. Can we put our hands together for those again that made the best decision? Because we wanna help you. Come on, come on down, brother. I see you coming down right over here. Come down. Here's what, we wanna help you with this journey. We wanna help you. I promise you, if you'll give us 12 months, if you made that decision, continue to come while I'm talking. Online, we'll help you. If you'll give us 12 months, get back here away every chance you get. Get involved everywhere you can, get connected. And, and we're gonna, right down here in the front, we're gonna help you. Begin to move forward. I'm telling you, 12 months from now, You'll say, man, that was the best decision I ever made. Believe in your heart. Say with your mouth. I want everyone, just everyone in here, those down here in the front, you say these words with me. Jesus is my Lord. You just turned the page to a brand new chapter. The rest of your life will be the best of my life.